Tip 1 then for cleaning some of your equipment it is very simple. You need a basin, you need a sponge, you need a dishcloth and a duster. You will also need some Mr Sheen and some washing up liquid. Looking after your rod is really important. Now, they can go from anywhere from 50 quid all the way up to a thousand pound, but regardless of the price of your rod, it just makes sense to look after it. The first thing I do is fill the basin with soapy water. And the first job is to scrub the cork handle. I just use a scouring pad that you would use for your pots and pans and gently rub it over the handle until the dirt is removed. The next job, once you're happy that the cork handle is clean, is to clean the reel seat. It has nooks and crannies and can often gather dirt and grime. Now, on the rod I'm using here, which is a Witchwood RS2, there is two uplocking screws to hold your reel into place. Now, these are not designed to move together. You should always open them up individually, and when you're tightening your reel to the rod, you should do them one at a time. Once you've finished cleaning, make sure you give the rod a thorough rinse. Now, take a dishcloth or a dish towel and dry the rod as best as you can. You've got to get all the water off, especially at the real seat area. Next, you can turn your attention to the blank. Now, I like to spray the furniture polish onto the cloth and then work up and down each section of the blank, ensuring that I get in between the guides and using the pointed end of the cloth to just clear the inside. Grit and dirt can gather in these spaces and you want to make sure that's clear. Particular areas to check are the ferrules and the tip ring. Sometimes, when you're using very long leaders, the tippet material can cut into your tip ring, causing a groove that can affect your fly line. So always make sure you give that a thorough look at. The reel will also need a thorough cleaning. What you see here is an RS cassette reel. And uh, I like the cassette reels because you can have multiple lines on very cheap cassettes and you're able to interchange them as required whilst on the water. Now the reel itself, uh, got, there's lots and lots of nooks and crannies where dirt and grime can, can gather. So a dip into the, into the scrubbing basin and just give it a thorough clean round, getting ready any grit, mud, stuck on dirt. Do both sides. My reel has a sealed drag system, so I've not got to worry about dislodging anything. And just make sure you get it well cleaned. Once you are content that you have got all the grime and dirt off the reel, make sure you give it a thorough drying with a dry dishcloth or tea towel. I like to leave mine to the side to make sure that no moisture is left on the reel before I put it back together and stick it away back into my bag or box. With the cost of fly lines going up and up all the time, it's never been more important to care for the lines you have. Now I have lots of different lines for various applications, river fishing, still water fishing and obviously the lock style lines. Now I have in excess of 40 lines across all three disciplines and I go through this ritual every time. Now basically what I do is strip the line from the spool and get it in the basin and I just use my fingers to agitate the line and hopefully uh, get the bulk of the dirt off. I use the soft side of the sponge and then just run the line through that until I've got to the very end.
<laughs> I wish it was this quick in real life. It takes a considerable amount of time to do all the fly lines. Once I'm happy that it's clean, what I like to do is then put the spool back on the reel. A little tip here, if you put a little bit of washing up liquid on the inside of your spool before putting it onto the reel, it just makes it much easier for taking on and off down the line. Once I have the spool back on the reel, I find it much easier to attach it to the butt section of the fly rod. Then take a dishcloth, a dry dishcloth or dry-ish and hold it onto the blank with my left hand whilst pushing the butt of the rod into my stomach. I can then reel with my right hand and if the line gets a little tangled I just agitate it out, give it a little shake and it just reels up. Again this can take a while, I've speeded it up here to save you sitting through me uh, reeling the line back on. Okay guys, let's have a look inside the box. So after the season, there's lots goes wrong with my box. It's absolute carnage inside. Now, usually at the end of the season, I would address this, but on this occasion, I've decided to wait until now. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of mess in there. Now, the first thing I do is empty the box out and then just go through the kit I've got in the box. I like to carry a first aid kit. A very small affair, it's just got elastoplasts, um, some headache tablets and I do also like to carry uh, Imodium just uh, in case the worst happens. There's nothing worse, you're out on the water, especially a big place like Rutland and suddenly you're caught short and you find you have to either motor back to the lodge or hit the bank pretty sharpish. As you've seen in the other clips, um, caring for your fly lines is essential really. If you look after them, they will last a lot longer, they will cast a lot better, and with the cost of these lines going up and up year on year, it just makes financial sense to look after your fly lines. Unfortunately, I've still got all my reservoir box lines to clean, and uh, it can take all, all of Sunday up sometimes, but uh, it's well worth the effort. This is my least favourite job, sorting out the fly boxes. Now, uh, my all my fly boxes are in a right state and uh, over the winter months I will sort through them. Uh, I just don't enjoy it at all. Uh, I like tying the flies, I don't like putting them away in boxes. It's a good time to check to see if there's any glaring gaps in the boxes. There's nothing worse than looking for a pattern and you found that you've lost them or the hooks aren't quite right. So well worthwhile getting that done over the winter months. Just make sure all your kit's clean, uh, give it a wipe over, make sure everything's working. This is my stopwatch for counting down sinking lines. Uh, and just make sure everything's serviceable. Cleaning the glasses, uh, again, these are expensive items. It just makes common sense to make sure you look after them and give them a clean. I have two sets of glasses for different lighting conditions. I have the dark glasses for when it's bright and sunny, and I have low light glasses for when conditions are much duller. As you can see on the table, I have a large set of magnifiers for the low light glasses, as these are not bifocal, which my bright sunshine glasses are. But hopefully, after the weekend, I won't need to worry about magnification. 
For the purpose of this video, you see me putting the lines back into the respective slots, but um, uh, the more discerning viewers amongst you will note that the, the bands have not got around the correct lines and I've not washed these yet. So that's a, a job for this coming weekend. I do have a set of gloves, I don't use them very often and they will come out the box as the weather picks up. I can't fish in gloves but what I like them for is if I happen to be in a match and I'm lucky enough to finish early, it's always nice to put your hands into a set of gloves. With my own box, I like to have everything in its place. Now this comes from decades of match fishing. I like to know where everything is, whether that be fly lines, uh, certain types of flies, sun cream, tippet, dry fly muslin, you name it, it has its place in my box. And I know exactly where it is. It's this set out that you see me putting it back together has been like this for years. As you can see there, I've got a set of binoculars. Everything has its place and I know exactly where everything is. I'm not suggesting that having all this equipment will make you a better angler and having it organised will help you catch more fish, but it will certainly make your day on the water much more pleasurable when you're not pulling things out of the box trying to find a specific item. 